Oh, Sunday night football. Oh, I'm rubbing my face again. Giants and the Bills. Mm. Bills are only favored by 14. Only favored by 14. Yeah, it feels low. <laughs> uh, we're probably not getting Daniel Jones, right, with his neck injury? It sounds like he thinks he's going to play. He sounds like he's in pain. Yeah, but I thought it's it was like, like he's not practicing, but we still think he's going to play. It's a, a, not like the man protects himself. B, not like anybody else is protecting him either. I that mm. Saquon Barkley still limited at practice. Darren Waller questionable. Can you imagine how bummed Brian Dayball is going to be during and after this game? You know, like I I came from there where it looks great. Yeah, and I'm supposed to be building that here, and now I've got a quarterback who was injured coming into the game, who may well be more injured after the game. I've got the worst offensive line in the NFL. My offense period looks like garbage. Unless and Tyrod go, balls out. And I have to go shake hands with all my buddies from over there, like patronizing me, being like, keep your chin up, Brian. You'll you get there. It's the head coach. You're a, you're a money solves everything guy. He's got, he's got that head coach paycheck. He did have a nice truck when he rolled in there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was the best video. <laughs> <laughs> rolled in. Like he's Matlock. trudging in his suit. That was great. Dude, that was rough. We have their offense only power ranked 20th. Yeah. It was funny because Daniel Jones um, – he graded pretty well the other day. He had two, two really nice throws that fell incomplete, didn't show up anywhere mm -hmm. on the stat sheet. You know, he's still tough to even gauge Daniel Jones and what you're going to – what you get out of him. We're heading into, what, year five of – we're in year five of Daniel Jones. And never has he ever really had a good supporting cast. I mean, last year you would say it looks like the play calling was great and they played to his strengths, but – the actual receivers he was throwing to, it was like, wow, how did that work? They did a you know good job coaching staff. So Jones has never really had a great situation. On top of that, he's just taken a beating. Now he's hurt. He is. Whether he plays or Tyrod plays, I mean, the Bills, we keep forgetting how good the Bills are because they'll lose a couple of games here and there, but they're still that team that beats up on Man, bad teams. He'll start for Tyrod, too. He's going to have to go with his old team, and they're going to yeah. kick his ass as well. And Tyrod's like, not exactly – I mean, he gets the – Rid of the ball way slower than I mean, Daniel he's just, Jones. He's not the guy he was when he was a Buffalo. And that was bad enough that everyone was like, when are we getting rid of Tyrod? Um, <clears throat> Daniel Jones is now the second most pressured quarterback in the NFL. Somehow Justin Fields, with the combination of how he plays the game, is actually pressured on more of his dropbacks than Daniel Jones. But 46% for Daniel Jones, which is the, the line, I think, for just non-viable <laughs> tends to be 45. 46 can't work. And he has the second worst passing grade whilst under pressure, uh, worse than everybody except DTR, who was so bad that they went, okay, we've seen one game of that. You're not playing anymore. We're going to go find PJ. Uh, so the Daniel Jones thing, it's like he's under pressure more than basically anybody else in the NFL, and he's worse whilst under pressure than anybody else in the NFL. Those two things together result in awfulness start to finish. Waiting all day for Sunday night, baby. And Buffalo is now rolling in. Mad. <laughs> Mad. After they had to waste a home game in London. You just have to go to London. Yeah. I would hate that. Can you imagine being, I mean, you as a large human being. Transatlantic flight. I mean, okay, they're probably in business class, but still. No, it's horrible. Sounds terrible. I mean, in the annual or the weekly, hey, we get to see Wink Martindale, his aggressive scheme. You can, probably, you can probably go back to being crazy now. Now it's crazy because yeah. it's not working. Right. It hasn't been terrible, but, you know, it's not great. So Josh Allen against the Bills, I mean, against the Giants and their, their defense, you know, they, they're leaving Cordell Flott on an island against Tyreek Hill. So, they'll, you know, Stephon Diggs will have some on an island plays. Uh, the chance that the Giants have to win this is Josh Allen throws the ball to the defense or misses some of those those deep opportunities, right? Those big play opportunities. But there'll be some in this game. I expect the Bills to do what they do against when, – when they have double-digit spreads, I don't have the numbers in front of me. It does feel like the Bills come through and take care of business. The, uh, there is one player on the entire Giants team who has a PFF grade above 76 – no, 77, sorry. You know who that is? Isaiah Simmons? No. 
Oh, Dexter Lawrence. Yes. Yeah, Dexter's been great. Dexter Lawrence, literally repeating what he did last year. The guy by far leads the NFL in total pressures from anybody that has serious snaps lining up a nose tackle. Like, he's doing exactly what he did last year. He's become one of the best players in the NFL, and everything around him is bad, so it doesn't really show up anymore. Yeah. Yeah, Dexter's awesome. Uh, Buffalo's going to be without Matt Milano, of course. He's injured. Daquan Jones, they had a very costly game in London last week. Yeah. Uh, I think that'll certainly matter more later in the season in bigger games. But, yeah, I like the Bills to cover the 14 here. Yeah. Green Line does not. Green Line's got a little edge for the, uh, for the Giants here. Hmm. But I'll take the Bills. Do they get, does it get better or worse with Tyrod at quarterback? Uh, I don't think it's probably worse. <laughs> Same. I don't think there's much of a difference. Uh-huh. I don't know how you do that uh, statistically because we haven't seen Tyrod in a few years. Right. And so if you just pull data, it would be like, well, his data is similar to Daniel Jones historically. But we, he's been sitting there as a backup the last couple of years either be, because he's worse, right, probably because he's worse, and then you have like rust factor and all that, so who knows. Yeah, like it, there's no – we don't have no idea – what current Tyrod Taylor really looks like. Yeah. Except it's probably not as good as it used to be. I mean, the last few times that we saw him, Brown starter, Charger starter, yeah. not very good at no. all.